Hello, John. What do you think of your fellow housemates? Uh, uh, oh, well, uh, they're all marvellous people. Uh, almost as lovely as my wife, Booby, especially the girls. Did I mention how wonderful I think the women are? Oh, a lot of time for them. Very, very bright things they are. Absolutely lovely. Equal to men in every single way. They're excellent in every single level. Especially ones with the big kahunas. <laughs> Nine and they still come down. Hello, my friends. Good evening. Welcome to uh, Celebrity Big Brother's Little Brother. They've now spent the first 24 hours in the Big Brother house. John started to turn on the charm with the ladies. Caprice has started to turn on John. And Bez, correct me if I'm wrong, is swiftly turning into a legend. Yeah. Uh, coming up on tonight's show, uh, the two words set to be the most important in the English language, possibly of all time fridge can. <laughs> You don't know what it is yet, but trust me, it'll be very exciting uh, and more of it later on. Uh, celebrities have made their first shopping request and the blackboard is in our possession. Uh, we might be seeing it later on. They might be calling it back. We never know. But we'll be talking about the housemates with Robin Ince later on. And Evil Big Brother has started as it means to go on. The housemates have undergone their first task. It got ugly and we have the details. Of course, we've also got a call BBLB. It's quite simply, what are your first impressions of the housemates? We're going to be taking your calls later on. But first, after 24 hours in the house, I want to get a stateside viewpoint uh, on our celebrity housemates. Please welcome showbiz correspondent Ashley Pearson. <laughs> oh, nice. nice Lovely to see you. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you. I love you here. <laughs> it's the glamour. I think it, is, it might actually. be your introduction, so thank really? you. Really? Fantastic. Okay. Uh, what do you think of our celebrities so far? Fantastic. What an eclectic group of people. I mean, it's going to be so many fireworks on this show. I, I can't even wait to see them. I mean, you have such a diversity. You've got the oldest member, the youngest member. Mm -hmm. You have a, a blonde bombshell who's insane. You have a blonde bombshell who's incredibly shallow. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> Ooh. I didn't see this when you came in for rehearsals. <laughs> OK, um, now, who's, who's your favourite so far? Have you got? Um, OK. I think that my favorite so far is John McCreerick mm -hmm. because he's so foul in so many ways. <laughs> and I, I have to say, I really enjoy that about him. I mean, he's this crazy man. I, I didn't know much about him before I moved to England, certainly. All right, I was here. And, and he's just, um, talk about a character. I yep. mean, his outfits, his hair, his personality, the things he says about women and their breasts. I mean, he's hilarious. John is definitely the most outspoken. We're going to talk about him in just a second. but. As you're American, we want to get your take on a certain young lady. Let's take a look at her first. So, hey, wow, this is, this is wild. Yeah. Oh. Oh. You're very that way. Business is good. <laughs> <laughs> Business is good. Uh, lovely Bridget. Yeah. I mean, she, from the minute she went in with all the... What is that diggity no thing? One, I, no one even knows what it is. I haven't spoke to any... Everyone, everyone who asks says it's something different. Yeah. Some person says, check it out. Someone says, yo, diggity. Someone says... <laughs> um, <laughs> what effect do you think she is going to have uh, on the housemates? Mm -hmm. Already, I could... I think, personally, she's kind of biding her time a little bit and she's just going to unload fairly soon. I think Bridget is going to be a lightning rod in this house because I think, actually, the other members are going to end up uniting in their mutual kind of um, disgust with her. I, Do you I, think? Well, I think Bridget... Well, first of all, a lot of people don't know this about Bridget, but she actually met her husband, Sylvester Stallone, by sending him naked pictures of herself in, in lingerie. So this isn't a woman who's not afraid to put it out there. I love there. the fact he fell for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, OK, you come around the mic. Exactly. Well, I mean, this is a woman who's made her whole career out of putting herself out there and she's going to get naked and she's going to be rolling around and she's going to be making an outrageous spectacle of sure. herself and it invariably especially I think it's going to annoy the women so I do think she's going to have an effect on this house definitely but I think at the end ultimately people are just going to be like she's crazy well you've gotten in there right because she she was on one of these shows stateside so yeah exactly it, I mean talk us through a little bit about that. how is she on that yeah well Bridget first of all she's she's building up to this because she did a reality show in Denmark where she was the first one booted off she kind of learned her lessons from that went on a show in the States called The Surreal Life, which was another kind of celebrity Big Brother show. And 
and um, spent most of her time naked and drunk. And all of a sudden, she was a huge star. Right. So I think she's probably building up. I can't even imagine what she's going to do on this show. My favorite thing about her is the fact that it's almost like she's cryogenically frozen from the moment she finished Beverly Hills Cop <laughs> 2 with her language and everything. <laughs> and then, like, they got her out yesterday from a car, and she was like, yeah, I just finished Beverly Hills Cop 2. Check it out. <laughs> Which I think is extraordinary, but I love her for it. All right, uh, Kenzie's the youngest housemate so far. Yeah. Let's take a look at how he's getting on. I was so nervous because I thought they're just going to look at me and think, who is that? He's just a boy, you know what I mean? No one's going to take you seriously. Whoa, whoa. How you doing? Nice to meet you. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Oh, you're the baby. I am. I feel a bit oh, nervous yeah. still. I'm 19. Obviously, I'm still quite young, innit? I love my PlayStation. So I didn't really get to speak to my mum. And oh, that, so no. I was like, I do like girls. Caprice, hot chick. <laughs> the young lad, the 19 year old, I think is a real, real find. I think he's a, he's a really bright, intelligent, uh, the kind of young man that, that the country should be proud of. Thank you very much, big brother. I very much appreciate it. Now, Kenzie, for me, already, I know we're only, sort of, you know, a day in or whatever, but he has been extraordinary, because when he first went in, I just thought, oh, he's going to get eaten up. And yeah. he's really proved himself. Everyone really loves him. I think no one's... Honestly, everyone likes him, and no one's going to not like him. I mean, he's a sweet guy, he's very vulnerable, he's very young, and I think, if, if anything, he may end up regretting how much he shares of himself on this show. I think, he, because of his youth, he may end up sharing things or being vulnerable in ways he may not know enough to protect himself. But I think everyone will love him. Mm -hmm. I think that he probably stands to gain the most in terms of all the people in the house because he wasn't so famous as an individual. He was part of a group. Sure. And now he's kind of... Everyone will know who he is after this moment. Sure. OK. Now, you talked about John earlier on. Let's take a look at possibly one of the favourite John moments. Go for it. We'll always marry beneath you in more ways than one. Phone lines are full ah. of women going on about their health. They're always ill. That's that is not true, true. It is true. The women like you have had it so easy all your lives. If you go out with a girl and she's a vegetarian, you know straight away the trouble. You're a good-looking woman. That you don't have to work false. for everything. It was not. It's and true. I really it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I just don't get where he comes from. Now, is it an act? Because I don't think it is an act. And I don't yet, either. There's something quite likable about him because he speaks his mind. Other than the fact that I would kill to cut his hair, to shave it off. <laughs> beyond that. <laughs> beyond. I think that I think it is. I think it's him. Look, he's an, he's an older guy. He spent a lot of time uh, uh, accumulating all of these mannerisms, these these outrageous opinions. He's never going to change. Mm. I certainly don't think he's going to change in, in you know two weeks. He's, but he's not unlikable. That's the thing. No, really? he's not. I'm I'm finding him in some kind of re I'm sort of repulsed and attracted at the same time. Yes. Well, I'd love to say the same. But I'm not... <laughs> well, the, not like that. You might be <laughs> you might be earring on the side of repulse when I show you uh, our next clip. We saw some shocking footage earlier. For those of you offended or, or in, in a case of audience might have been drinking, might have fairly dicky tummies. Turn away now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Say what I like about that. Not unsubstantial. <laughs> I'm just pointing it out. That's <laughs> all. OK, uh, lastly, who do you want to win? OK, who I want to win... Um, I think it would be hilarious if John McCurick won because he's so foul and disgusting and it would be really fun. I, I think Jeremy Edwards may win. Okay. He's mild-mannered, he's not going to upset anyone, he seems like a sweet guy. I think he has a good chance. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for now, Ashley, thank you very much. You're welcome. Yeah. All right, now at 1.20 uh, a.m. this morning, John McCurick a startling theory with regards to flatulence. Take a look at this. Every time you fart, you live another ten minutes. Yeah. It gives you another ten minutes of life. Another well, minute is getting the poisons out of your body. It, it's good for you. You read it. It is I good. It's good. It's good. You're getting the poisons out of your body. What's wrong with you, but woman? Uh, Okie doke. So he says that farting uh, takes ten minutes off your life, or, or adds ten minutes to your life, rather, every single time you do it. Um, well, you know, we wanted to get an expert's opinion on this. The closest we have to a resident doctor in it has been on before is Dr. Mark Hamilton uh, from Radio One. He should be on the phone now. Hello, Dr. Mark. Evening, Dermot. How, How are you? you? Well, I'm very good, thanks. And it's always good to uh, to help out with these important medical issues. So please, <laughs> <Excellent>. uh, <laughs> we certainly appreciate it. Uh, so, so, what do we make of this theory of, uh, of John's? Well, you know, if you do keep that gas in, it can give you a sore tummy, of course. Um, so I would say it is good to get it out. And if nothing else, it's funny. And happier people live longer. So, 
In a way, his theory could work. OK. Now, uh, he also had a, another theory uh, about bogeys, uh, or, or nasal appraisal is probably a better way of putting it. Let's, let's just take a look at that. I was very, very pleased to read some time ago is that an Austrian lung surgeon said that people who pick their noses, which I do all the time, that is really good for you. That you're picking your nose, it's yeah, really is healthy and eating it. It is really not healthy. Not eating it. Yes, oh eating my it. God. No. I mean, you know, he's saying it, so we're reporting it. So that's what we're here for. Uh, what, what do you think about that? Well, you see, the sad thing about these two issues is that not enough money and time is being done uh, for research in them. Um, so this, this last issue about the bogeys, I'm afraid I don't have any knowledge on it. My knowledge is fairly wide and, and varied, but uh, this is one I'm going to have to buy to superior knowledge and wisdom on. Dr. Mark? I don't know. Dr. Mark? I can you, hear you. You've been drinking, haven't you? <laughs> uh, Dr. Mike, thank you very much. We'll speak to you very soon, I hope. Thanks, David. OK, we want to know what you think. Is John's theory correct? Are... I can't believe we're doing this. Is John's theory correct? Are bogeys good for you? <laughs> Text poll A if you think they are, or poll B if you think they're not. 83188 will clear all of that up and more for you after the break. We'll see you in a minute. Give Dermot a call if you want to chat to him about what I've been up to on Celebrity Big Brother. Uh, thanks, Kenzie. Uh, welcome back to BBRB. Still to come, I'll be uh, talking favourite housemates with comedian Robert Ince for the first time. But find out exactly what's been going on today in the Big Brother house. It's time for Little Brother's Big News. <laughs> um, hello there. Uh, first up, Kenzie cups his balls. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> We're lowering the tone. Um, housemates have really broken the back of the notorious Big Brother boredom by inventing a revolutionary new game. The rules? Quite complicated. But they basically involve rolling a ball into a cup. Uh, Kenzie's shown a talent that belies his tender age by becoming the first house champ. Take a look at this. Oh! oh I didn't hear, no, I didn't hear any... No, I didn't... So fast, couldn't even get an action replay there. Uh, next up, <laughs> housemate found tripping. Well, it was only a question of time until we caught one of the housemates tripping. Uh, we obviously feel pretty bad about this. Uh, they found it hard to stay on their feet. You see, you thought I was talking about <laughs> something totally different. Uh, the guilty tripper was Miss Jermaine Greer. Take a look at this shocking footage. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. I'm going to keep on doing that. I've got to learn that. Step. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, uh, next up, tasking times for the housemates. Uh, evil Big Brother paid its first visit to the Big Brother house. Housemates were called to the diary room to answer questions on each other. In a cruel twist, if they answered incorrectly, they were faced with a terrible dilemma. Can't say any more. Can I listen to the options again, please? Look at this pretty bra. This is gorgeous. Oh, God, Caprice, this really is hard. Tough one, love. I don't know what to say. I'm trying to get inside your mind. That's what you're asking me to do. OK, for the full story and, indeed, uh, all of uh, John's dialogue there, tune into the show tomorrow night, 9 o'clock on Channel 4. That was Little Brothers Big News. <laughs> Uh, time now, you're going to like this, to introduce a technological marvel. Uh, it's our very own Big Brother's Little Brother view into the Big Brother house. It's very exciting. I'm very excited about this. For the first time, we have our very own camera in the house. They gave us the option. They said you can put it where you like. We thought long and hard about the location of the camera. It was important, for example, to give us an insight into the Big Brother house, into the minds of the housemates, to see what motivates them, to see what keeps their engines running. So with that in mind, we put it in the fridge. Uh, it's been up and running for 24 hours. I'm going to share with you now some startling footage. Take a look. OK, there's Bridget. She is not messing around straight away with the fridge. She's even eating. She wants more. What's in there? She's thinking. What's in there? She's getting out. Oh, no, she's getting out pasty. No, she's changed her mind. She doesn't want the pasty. She'll take... She'll just take... Oh, oh a pepper instead there. That's enough for me. Uh, here is... Uh, there she's got some milk. Lord knows where he found that. He's putting it in there. And a quick look around. Jeremy is looking in. 
Shall I do some sit-ups or shall I... No, I'm going to go and do some sit-ups. Uh, there she is again, Bridget. What shall I go for that? That pepper? No, the enormous big platter. There we go. As you can see there. And lastly, there's Bez. Oh, what do I want? Oh, what am I going to do here? No, indeed. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Breathless show. Uh, we'll bring you more NASA-style footage from the fridge cam as and when we have it. Giving his first impressions now on The Housemates. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome comedian Robin Entz. <laughs> Hello, mister. That's a good handshake. You're, well, you're very well raised with a handshake like that. I love that Bez cam thing, because it looks like he's not looking for anything in the fridge. He's just looking at the fridge going, wow. <laughs> you open it and you go, whoa, this is crazy. That's the great thing about Bez. Yeah. Every, he's excited about everything. On his profile yesterday, he was, he was freeing a sheep, and he was going, oh, look at a sheep. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, what do you think of the housemates? Um, I think there's, it's a fascinating section. I mean, the first thing I want to know is, is it true that Bridget Nielsen is actually the Nadia of Celebrity Big Brother? Because I've heard that those are fake. Is it true? No? OK, <laughs> fair enough. I just, I just wanted to know. We're kept very much in the dark around here. Don't tell us anything. That's how Stallone got away with it, because he's always going, I'm just going to get undressed in the dark, OK, <laughs> Sylvester? Don't go below there. <laughs> There's a thing. Oh, we're going out so late, it's fine. <laughs> I'm used to six o'clock normally, I'll be like this. <laughs> OK, um, now, the big news tonight is that the closed task that we've just heard about, um, you know, this is fairly good sort of standard evil Big Brother stuff, right? I don't think it's quite evil enough, but it will be evil if John McCreary loses his clothes. Uh, not all of them, cos I, I, I actually once did something with, with John McCreary, and it what turns out... What did he do with John McCreary? Uh, well, he was, he was on the Priory years ago, and, and I used to write, the where is James Feekson links? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he, he came on, and he was just in his pants, and I have to say that John McCreary has a slightly gamey smell about him. The point about tweed is tweed does hold in sweat. <laughs> okay. uh, over hundreds of years, his, his skin is now just... Felt... Over hundreds of so years. Just, just, just him wandering around in tweed <laughs> would be very painful for everyone else. Lovely. OK, well, we can't reveal the exact outcome of the task. We can tell you we spared the sight of the naked mercuric, but let's have a look at him right now. You may now pick them up and look at them if you wish to do so. I'll leave the pants, but... Um... Have a look at the cigars. Lisa I. Anson there, sparing you the, uh, the, the gorgeous John and the tweed. What, which of the housemates have caught your eye? Who'd you like? Uh, well, I have to admit, I am absolutely fascinated by Jermaine Greer being in there. I think she's brilliant. I'm a big fan of, of silent movie comedy, and as you showed, she's got a lovely trip <laughs> about her. I, I, I would like young Kenzie maybe to get a swanny whistle. So every time, whoop, whoop, something like that. <laughs> That he's, a, he's a musical lad, and also I think it might be like The Graduate, and she may well seduce young Kenzie. You think? Yeah, I think it could happen. <laughs> Kenzie's scared. Have you seen his face? He's there going, look at all these big people! <laughs> and, you know, Jermaine, she's, she's written a book about the fact she likes the younger man. Okay. Either that or Bez is going to teach him how to dance. OK, let's take a look at Jermaine in action. You never do. It, life yeah, is unfair, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you should know that. With that face, well, I don't like you should know that life is unfair. Tuna. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the hungriest person here, the fattest here, and the least consulted on what we're doing. And the least productive, so just shut your fucking cake off. Audience, I just want to come to you. We haven't heard much from you apart from those kind of drunken blahs so far. Who, who's a big Jermaine fan in the audience? You've got down there, right down there. So, hello there, young lady. Hello. Yeah. What do you think? Um, I reckon she's right, man. She should give him a run for his money. Oh, I like that. That's uncompromising style. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> she's a woman, man. She's our woman. Should be, uh, women should be, and I think that most, like, they should like start fighting more sparks and all that stuff. It should be good. I'd like to get you in the house for the day. <laughs> <laughs> terrific. Um, do you think anyone will get to her? Do you think? I mean, you know, she seems to be very calm. I mean, you know, John's trying to wind her up, and she's not buying it at all. Really. I, I think if you could actually see a scale model, she's about that tall, and everyone else is just holding onto her skirts like they've got lost in Woolworths <laughs> near the pick and mix. You know, this kind of. She has got that. That and, and just the way she was there. Life is unfair. That's the way it is. Sometimes you've got to eat gruel. <laughs> OK, um, how, do, how far do you think she can get? Uh, I think she will get to the last three. And I think someone like Jeremy Edwards will win. Because... Because he's bland and pretty and the girls like him. Mm -hmm. He's a nice lad. He's a nice... That's the thing, he's a nice guy. He's not going to rock a boat or anything like that. Lisa Ranson will be first to go. 
You think? Yeah. Okay. Are you well, going to stay with us for Cool BBLB, okay? Oh, yeah. Okay, brilliant stuff. Uh, we have a text result for you right now. Obviously, earlier on, the low ebb of my career, we asked you if John's theory of eating your bogeys is good for you. 77, 77 uh, people, I don't know if that's 7.7 .7 people that texted in said yes. Uh, no said uh, 23. Now, I need you to do me a favour. I'll be back with you in a minute. Thank you very much, Robin. I need you to do me a favour. I want you to have a smile. I want you to have just a quick look. A smile on these people's faces. <laughs> do that, do that. If you'd like to join these people here, you two could be this happy. All you have to do is watch this. <laughs> to come and join the veritable party at the BBLV studio, all you have to do is call 09911 200 300. 09911 200 300. Or email bblb.audience at bigbrother.endemolluk.com. Com. We sincerely hope to see you soon. Uh, almost it now. Uh, time to get on some callers. Call BBLV today. Just first impressions of the housemates. Robin's still with me. Uh, Tarek is in Hampshire. Hello, Tarek. Hi, Dermot. Loving the show. Thank you very much, Tarek. It's quite breathless at the moment. We've got so much to get through. <laughs> yes. um, go for it. Um, I just want to know, how long do you guys think John's going to last in the house with the, his brutal honesty and everything? Is it going to backfire on him? What do you guys think? First, first things first, Tate, what do you think about John? Um, I think he's doing all this just to wind people up and to, get, and to grab the attention, really. Um, I mean, I know that he's probably brutally honest in real life anyway, but I think he's just doing it to grab the limelight, quite yeah. frankly. Yeah, bit of a caricature of himself. Yeah, he's, he's a kid. He likes showing off, doesn't he? go, oh, I think all women are ugly. <laughs> he's like that, really, but he's grown up and he's 17. Everyone would just walk away from him like they do with, like, you know, sport children. He's just going to go... Mm. Yeah, but that'll be the smell Girl of power. tweed. That'll be the smell <laughs> yeah. of tweed. Oh, God. <laughs> OK, next up, Cathy uh, in Devon, I believe. Hello, Cathy. Hi, Dermot. How you doing? I'm doing fine, loving the show. Thank you. What are your thoughts? Well, I'm wondering about Jeremy. He's a big fan of Big Brother. Mm. And I want to know whether you think, with his knowledge of the show, is he going to play tactically to win? What do you think? I mean, is Jeremy, I don't think Jeremy is a tactical kind of a guy, really. I think he's just a nice... He's one of... He's the normal person. He's the most normal person in there, I think. So he's just going to... I think he's just going to wander through it, play snakes and ladders, and be fine. You could see with that moment, that he... That, that moment, sort of five minutes in yesterday, when he just sat down, he was sat around, and he just... You know, when you're in there, you see all the mirrors. You can see him going, oh? OK. Because <laughs> it's totally different, obviously, on the side round. Uh, Anne in Somerset's next. Hello, Anne. Hi, I was just wondering what you think, given uh, Jermaine Greer's academic background, is she going to fall foul of boredom in the house? I think she'll uh, intimidate the housemates, I think. Was that...? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I don't think she will, because I once... And I'm showing off here, but I once sat next to Jermaine Greer at a screening of Adam Sandler's Big Daddy. <laughs> and she laughed all the way through it. So there <laughs> we go. You're I just throw them out, don't I? You're a veritable name <laughs> job, Robin. OK, uh, thank you very much, Robin. I've just got time to have a quick look at uh, tomorrow's papers. Uh, Daily Mirror, what is saying? Whoa there. It's day one in the Big Brother house, and John McCuka has really upset his fellow housemates. Uh, Daily Star saying, you're my totty. John McCuka has upset the Big Brother housemates already. Among his rants, he called Caprice Totty, Blazing Squad's Kenzie a little squirt, and he said he loves to eat his bogeys. And uh, apparently the son is saying that uh, Jerem uh, Bridget is hitting on Jeremy's. That's your lot. We're here at uh, more House Action Channel 4 tomorrow at 9. We're back at 1 o'clock on Sunday. See you then.